With the arrival of winter weather here in central North Carolina, many of my scaly warm weather companions will be retreating underground to brumate until things heat back up in the spring. Fortunately for my sanity, winter does not, by any stretch of the imagination, mean that the herping season is over. In fact, cooler temperatures combined with precipitation events can draw out some of the most elusive amphibians around, salamanders. A real treat to photograph or film in their natural habitat, the goals of this video are to show you how to safely and responsibly locate these adorable little gummy lizards and hopefully teach you a few cool facts about them along the way. Alright, now the very first thing that you're going to want to do when you're looking for salamanders is find good salamander habitat. So right now, you can see that we're in this really, really nice woodland area that is near water. And that is pretty key for most species of salamander. So salamanders, as amphibians, must keep their skin moist at all times. And while they do spend a lot more time out of the water, at least for most species, uh, than they do actually being in the water, they still have to have pretty moist habitats, and they still have to have some kind of cover that will keep them moist during the day. Um, so once you have located a source of water that is there most of the year, or even an ephemeral pool that's there maybe over the winter, you can start looking for structures that might have salamanders underneath them. Now salamanders use a pretty wide variety of structures, but their preferred shelter seems to be down woody debris. So that's mostly going to be logs, uh, is a great place to look for salamanders. Uh, they will spend almost all of the daytime hours under that log. Uh, maybe they occasionally will travel out if it's really rainy or something like that. Um, but for the most part, they're going to be spending the daytime hours under these logs. And if you're really lucky, and you're in the right place at the right time, you can catch them um, under these logs during the day. It's a lot easier to find them at night when it's raining because they're actually active. But for daytime hunting, really the only way to see a lot of these species is going to be flipping logs. All right, so let's talk about log flipping, the hallmark of hunting for winter salamanders during the day. Now this is a good example of a log that could harbor a salamander because as you can see, it's pretty big, it is well decayed, which means that there is going to be lots of loose soil under the log that salamanders can utilize. And as these logs decay, in this wood begins to turn to soil, it gets really spongy. So I'm squeezing this soil and now there's water on my hands. So these logs are absolutely perfect for salamanders because it provides them with habitat and it provides them with water, which are two very important parts of salamander biology. So what you want to do is just very gently overturn that log and you're looking in these soils that are underneath the log for salamanders. Now, sometimes when you first flip a log, even if there is a salamander under it, you won't see it. So you might have to just gently brush around the leaf litter under the log and just look very, very closely for anything moving. So this log, this log does not have any salamanders, but this brings up a good point. Even though I didn't find a salamander under this log right now, when I go to set it back, what I want to do is be very gentle and put it back exactly the way it was before. Because you don't want to disturb any of the invertebrate communities that are under this log, and you don't want to ruin a potential home for a salamander uh, at some other point in time, even if there wasn't one under there when you checked. So that is log flipping procedure. That is the staple of salamander hunting. And now all you have to do is flip some logs. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> There's actually salamanders under this one. Check it out. That is a lead back salamander. And that is a red back salamander. Now, obviously their names sound very similar and they look pretty similar, at least as far as body shape goes. And if you do think they look similar and sound similar, you're right. They're actually the same species. So this is just a color morph of this. So some individuals have more red, while some individuals have a little more gray. But they're actually the exact same species. 
they are capable of breeding and they frequently do. That's really, really neat. Uh, there's actually three under this log. One little guy is hiding over there. Yeah, so we have two redbacks and one leadback under the same log. Now that is something that I actually see somewhat commonly when I'm looking for salamanders. It seems like certain logs, like this one, are just much more favorable for one reason or another and it attracts more salamanders. And that is so cool that we got to find some today. Finally, it took forever and they're running away now. So let's see if I can get them on top of the log and get just a couple cool videos before they flee. These redback salamanders are examples of woodland salamanders from the Plethodon genus. Like other woodland salamanders, these little guys tend to be pretty long and thin, and can reach lengths of up to 5 inches long. Redbacks actually spend their entire lives on land, starting as eggs deposited under the debris where adults are found, and skipping the aquatic larval stage completely to hatch as many adults. Another cool thing about this species is that the females actually show high levels of parental care and will aggressively defend their eggs from other salamanders when necessary. Ecologically, they are important predators of invertebrates such as mosquito larvae and prey items for larger salamanders and many species of birds and mammals. While these redbacks were definitely a really neat find, I wanted to flip just a few more logs and try and turn up one or two more salamanders before leaving. So a lot of times when you're flipping logs, you just have to remember that it's very rare to find salamanders and they're not usually, oh my god! Oh, I mean, oh my gosh, wow! You're kidding! Okay, look at that. That, oh my gosh, was what we were looking for this whole time. That is a marbled salamander. This is definitely one of the most elusive salamanders, in my experience at least, that we have in North Carolina. I very rarely ever see these guys. That is so cool. Now, let me grab him real quick. Let me get my hands moist so I can pick him up, and then I'll show you guys what makes them so awesome. I cannot believe our luck today. This is a marbled salamander. One of the very few salamanders that we have in North Carolina in the mole salamander genus. Now, as you can see, very differently than the plethodon salamanders, like the redback or leadback that we took a look at earlier. Oh, we got ants on me. This marbled salamander is very, very plump. He's very squat. He is not uh, thin or, or linear at all, like the plethodon salamanders were. Now that is a very common trait of all salamanders um, in the mole salamander genus. All the ambistamids have this kind of body shape. It's very rare to see these um, out in the day. I can't express to you how lucky it is that we actually got to find one. Like It's beyond fortunate um, that we were able to come out just for an hour or two and get our hands on one of these salamanders. Now mole salamanders are unique in that not only are they eating invertebrates under these logs, but they're also eating other salamanders. So these are predatory salamanders. Um, the, these, especially a large individual like this, would have no qualms about eating a, a redback or leadback salamander like the ones we just looked at. Um, so that makes them very important to salamander food chains and the, the entire uh, ecosystem under these logs uh, kind of depends on, on the presence of these mole salamanders where they are native. Um, so under a log where this little guy is living, it will be an ambush predator, so it'll probably hang out in its hole. Uh, it won't do too much during the day, but at night, uh, especially in rainy nights, it's going to use its surprisingly acute sense of smell, as well as its very sensitive um, attention to vibrations to seek out and consume all kinds of prey, including things like worms, beetles, salamanders, mosquito larvae, any invertebrate or smaller amphibian that this little guy can get his jaws on, he will definitely eat. And right now, as you can see, he's being very relaxed in my hand. Uh, he's not moving at all, and probably he's kind of in this little state of torpor during the day, but at night, and especially if it got rainy, this guy will turn into the little apex predator of, of these beneath log ecosystems. This is such 
a cool little animal. They are so adorable. They have this eternal little smile on their face and their little fat rolls, oh my gosh, they are so cute. I think uh, that this is probably my favorite species of North Carolina salamander. Uh, I've never been able to see some of the rarer ones such as hellbenders or spring salamanders quite yet, so I can't pass full judgment. But of the salamander species that I've been able to experience myself, marbled and spotted salamanders have definitely been my favorite. They're just so charismatic, and especially little ones like this are absolutely adorable. Now, another reason that we were able to find this salamander out at all, uh, even under a log in good habitat, is because right now is actually the breeding season for marbled salamanders here in the North Carolina Piedmont. So, during the early winter, especially once that fall to winter moisture starts coming in, uh, these guys get into their breeding mood. So, they'll go through the leaf litter while it's moist and they can stay secure and, and hopefully avoid predators. Um, and they will all migrate towards breeding pools. Now, uh, those breeding pools are usually temporary water sources, so like ephemeral wetlands are the preferred breeding site of something like a marbled salamander because it is those breeding pools that are predator free. So if this little guy were to go crawl down to the pond or that creek that's behind me and try to deposit eggs, either it would probably get eaten by something or its eggs or babies would get eaten by something. However, by utilizing ephemeral wetlands, marbled salamanders can pretty much avoid the predation of themselves and their eggs, which is, I think, a pretty cool reproductive strategy. That also means it's very important that we keep ephemeral wetlands clean and we keep the woodlands around them preserved. Uh, forests like this with healthy understory and healthy trees uh, help kind of filter the water and slow it down as it comes into those wetlands to keep it contaminant free. And these guys are very, very sensitive to any kind of water pollutants or siltation. Uh, since they are amphibians and a lot of their gas exchange does occur through their skin, uh, they can really get messed up if their water sources get contaminated by pesticides or herbicides or, or uh, silt from like, construction sites, for instance. So it's very important that we're always being mindful of water quality use around areas where these salamanders do breed. So we're going to get him back under his log now. He's been such a great subject for this video. He's so, um, so calm uh, while we've been filming, although I do not want to hold him for too long. Even though my hands are moist, I got them nice and wet in the dirt before we started filming. I would hate for him to dry out too much and become unhealthy as a result of this experience. So we are going to get him right back under the log right now. Um, and that's also important, so if you do ever manage to locate one of these salamanders, try to have as low impact an experience as possible with them. Um, just photograph them. Sure, if you want to handle them, um, just make sure your hands are moist because your skin oils can actually also interfere with their skin's ability to exchange gases. Um, so that's very important. And just get them back as soon as you can so you don't disturb their cycle all too much. That is such a cool animal and we will get this beautiful little salamander back in its habitat right now. Now one thing to remember when you're putting salamanders back under their log if you're done photographing them is to make sure you replace the log first and then put the salamander under. Otherwise you could actually crush the salamander when you're rolling the log back and although it's unlikely because they know how to get out of the way uh, it is just a lot easier if you will put the salamander beside the log and let it crawl back under on its own. Ready to go back home, buddy? Check it out. He knows exactly where he is. See you, man. Thanks for letting me film you. One thing to keep in mind when searching for salamanders under logs or any other debris is to remain respectful of these delicate microhabitats. If you destroy or relocate natural cover while herping, you are degrading herp habitat and making it harder for neat animals like salamanders to thrive. So always be gentle when flipping logs and be absolutely certain to put them back just the way you found them. Well everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about redback and marbled salamanders. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video, and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. 
Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno, of The Wild Report, signing out.